Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, wa ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself, an abdul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal. And but by the grace of Allah we are still alive. That Allah's rahmah be upon us and dress us and bless us and forgive us. And alhamdulillah that this way of marifah, this way of light was meant that our salah be our tafakkur, that to sit and connect our hearts and there was a time in which Ahlul Islam when they prayed, they prayed with their full heart, with all their taskiyah and all their training and that their salah was like a real salah, that they're praying with their soul. When the way of taskiyah ends which is the way of purification and cleaning, then the salah is an empty action, an action filled with nafs and bad character and bad desires and we've taught before that even the wudu and all the practices shaitan still inside. So people are focusing on the external and not the internal and they think the external is important and that you people who do this internal stuff it's just like your entertainment. But it's wrong, the malakut kulli shay. In Surah Yasin Allah describes that this world of light, it's kulli shay, it, it contains all the power, means all the authority is from the world of light, not the world of form. You cannot exist without your atoms and your energy and your light, but your atoms and your light exist without your form. As a matter of fact they exist better without your form. And that's why Prophet described, my passing is better for you than my staying. Because when my form goes my reality is, is all open. So the form is, a, is inhibits our reality. So those whom build their light and their soul with their taskiyah, with their zikr, with their practices Kulli shay Allah then describes it is all powerful that when they open their spiritual heal, hearing means they hear with their soul and with their heart, means they already discipline the physical hearing. You can't have a spiritual hearing if your physical hearing isn't disciplined. You have to unlock the physical ears with the discipline, with the taskiyah, with the cleaning, with the taqwa so that the spiritual opens. One whom open their spiritual hearing, they hear the inspirations that Allah wants for them. The commands that are coming at every moment to their soul, they open the doorway of the soul now speaking to them from what Allah wants from you, what Prophet wants from you, what these ulul amr are inspiring to you, you've opened up your heavenly email system. So imagine this box of ours, our physicality is like a walking dead on this earth. Doesn't know where it's going, doesn't know what it's seeing, doesn't know what it's supposed to do. It's like an empty phone, beautiful, you know some people's clothes are nicer than others. Better hairdos and you know just a fancier phone. But unless you take this way of malakut and this way of realities where you sign up for a contract, and that's the bayah. When Allah is describing, the bayah was that they acknowledged that, Ya Rabbi I'm just a hollow shell and I want to reach back to what I have promised to you. I came to this earth. I realize that I'm, I have a mission here, I have a purpose for being here. I want to reach to my covenant with you. What is it that I promised you? And that way then was through the bayah. They take the hand of Allah 
which is from this knot is on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad So they say, Ya Rabbi then guide me to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and then these are my ulul amr that not they're only alam from outside but their alam is inside that their soul is connected, their, their being is connected and their knowledges are real and connected and flowing. There are again the scholars who study only from the book and they know only external but we just talked about all of that that it has to be from Malakut. So the one who only read the book and his knowledge is external he's not complete. He's not truly believing in what he studied and what he read and what he learned for had he believed it and it been real and he took his way of taskiyah, that knowledge would have been activated within the person. How many people study salah but they don't know how to pray through their soul? So what was all the study? They studied all the fiqh, they studied all the sharia, they studied all of that but it did not affect their soul and affect their being because they studied it at the level of the head. So it's not that reality. So then the ulul am whom ittaqullah wa alimakumullah they took a path inspired by Allah of consciousness and taqwa. How to prepare that reality, how to have good characteristics and with their good characteristics Allah began to teach them. Means inspired their heart to the turuqs inspired their heart to when the shaykhs talk they were, lear they were learning like it was being burned onto their soul. And the shaykh would talk and they would have many understandings from that talk like a channel that would open from this heavenly world of light. Every word came in hundreds of understandings, tens of understandings, a few understandings means it was flowing in of realities. That whom Allah they had a taqwa and Allah taught them. So means then this way had a power, they understood the realities, they trained to the realities. So that when they make their salah it's with their soul. They make their salah their soul is feeling that reality, their soul is, is moving back into that ocean of connection. When Allah created them and said, am I not your Lord and we said, bala, yes, means the soul to soul connection of their reality at that level their salah is becoming more and more real. So then that's when salah was a part of tafakkur because many comment now that what is it, is meditation even in Islam? We have salah, I say, yeah our salah used to be with tafakkur. Now it's a hollow practice, the one making salah has no taskiyah. What is the value of that salah? And if the salah is with bad character and shaitan within them, again many other talks we've had this, the shaitan is inside the person, how then the salah is going to change them? And that the devil inside makes the salah to be dirty, it doesn't even raise because the shaitan is not going to go up with them. The shaitan is inside that person, nothing will be raised by that person, it just stays at that ground level and that's why the condition of the nation. They took and left the way of taskiyah and they kept the shell in a form and they think the shell in the form is going to be doing something. And that the cleaning of the heart, cleaning of the mouth, cleaning of the mind those were secondary but unfortunately those are primary. And they, they, they took even the, the feeling or understanding that I don't need anyone to help me. And we said that this gate is the gate of tawbah. This way to find these ulul am they are dressed from the sultanat. And the sultanat has to do with the reality of the number nine. Means their reality goes from one through nine, awwal is one, awwal akhir is nine. 
everything is based on this secret of 19 of 1 through 9. The 9 being this highest most powerful number because it's single digit. 10 is 1 and 0, it reduces to 1. 9 is the authority, 9 is the submission, 9 is the power. So they come and teach, there's a code in this Holy Qur'an that these Ulul Amr they move from Surah 9, they move in Surah Tawbah. What then Surah Tawbah describes for these people who say, there is no need for a shaykh, there is no need for whatever you're doing, you do it yourself. And as a result nobody gets off the ground. So Surah Tawbah verse 103, Haji Shahid you read for us that I can find my notes in there. Verse 103 on Surah Tawbah, Surah 9, Surah verse 103. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Khudh min namawalihim sadaqatan tutahhiruhum wa tuzakkiruhum Kim biha wa salli alayhim inna salataka sakanun lahum wallahu sami'un alim Sadaqullah al-Azim wa barakta Rasul al-Kareem a way of logic with these people is that one, do you believe that the Holy Qur'an is a book that is beyond this understanding of life? It's Allah's not created words, it's not created, has no life and death. It is a timeless reality, it is not the stories of old. Was ahla, uh, Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah, the Aqeedah is that. If you believe other than that, turn the page, you lost it. So the book, Allah's words are live, right now must be relevant right now. Second part of our belief is Sayyidina Muhammad don't deem him that he passed away, he's more alive in his grave than any of the shuhada that Allah describes in Holy Qur'an. He's hadirun nadir, he's present and he's aware As Allah describes, when you pass the martyrs, don't think them dead in their grave, they're very much alive because hayat al-barzaq and the, the life of the grave is from the soul. Not the physical body sitting up and having tea, they don't need that body, they parked the car that was not the passenger. You know when you go into your house you leave your car outside, you don't take the car inside the living room and say, I'm going to watch TV from my car. There's no mind people say, oh look their bodies, they're seeing these people in their bodies sitting and having tea in the grave, they're alive. A child can understand it better than them. The life is of the driver, not the vehicle. This body has no value to Allah the, the body, the real value is my soul. When I park the body into the dirt, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, this soul is very much alive and is free, is free from this confines of the body. This soul can be everywhere and anywhere with Izzatullah it wants. Study a little bit of light and the physics of light, how many places it can be at the same exact time and communicate with all of those realities, 
Abu Yazid al Bistami said, Today I prayed Jummah 24,000 locations. At that time they were allowed to talk like that. Now it's time of Dajjal, they can't say anything because they say, You're a magician. They're able to send their soul into hundreds of locations. And if Allah give them a permission, they can have a form different at all of those locations. Like carjacking, they can take any form they want. It's not something hard for Allah Those are the abdal, there are 40 of them in Shama Sharif that they can appear in any form on this earth. Luhayfi, Imam al-Luhayfi in Damascus is the imam of them. Means they have an imam, they must be under command from Sayyidina Muhammad of these budala and these afdal that they can be many places at the same time. You never know if you're in a difficulty, one of them appears in a form you don't have to understand who that person is and they make a du'a and najat and they save you from some sort of sickness or difficulty that was coming. And they go as fast as they came you won't even know who that person was. But they were ordered by Prophet to appear and to relieve a difficulty. This is our belief, this is a belief of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. So means all of this hayat and the living book that has no time beyond this understanding of time, now Allah says for this bab of tawbah that take from their wealth so that you may purify them. Oh ajeeb! That Allah is actually saying to Prophet so that anytime we talk about Sayyidina Muhammad there must be the ulul am who are ahbab and they've inherited the Muhammadan reality. Allah is saying to Prophet take from their wealth, purify them. They say, oh, Allah is the only one who purifies. No, no, Allah just described to us. That Prophet by taking from people he will actually purify you, tahiruhum. So if you want to be tahir and you want to be purified, find a way in which Prophet can take from you. Don't give to the people who don't believe in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad it's not reaching the hand, it's not reaching the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad People think that they give charity, it doesn't matter. But in, in reality if you give to these charities that propagate against the love of Sayyidina Muhammad you're making them stronger and real Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah become weaker. So then Allah find the Muhammadan hands, give to them tahirhum, they're going to purify you. Then Allah says, and then cause them to grow in faith and pray for blessings upon them. To zakihim, biha and buy it by what you gave to zakihim. That they're going to actually now make you to grow. But they said, This was only from Allah. So, no, Allah just say, You're incorrect. I have in my holy book telling you that if you go to Sayyidina Muhammad and his representatives, representatives, they will purify you and they will cause you to grow by means, be happy by means of what you have given and pray for blessings upon them. So Allah is telling you and they will pray for blessings upon you. For verily your blessings are a reassurance for them. So you give when you make du'a for them, these Muhammadiyoon because they are the extensions of Sayyidina Muhammad That Prophet this is the Hadith al-Qudsi, that they are my eyes in which I see my ahbab. They're the ears in which I hear these ahbab. They're the tongues in which I speak these ahbab. They're my hands in which I touch you these ahbab. 
their feet are on my feet and they are the muqaddam and inheritors of Siddiq, Qadam as-Siddiq. That they pray for you and that prayer is a reassurance and then Allah seals the whole deal and says that, I'm the hearer and knower. So don't be worried, I hear what they do because I'm the one who's hearing it and I know what they do, I'm the one who's giving it. Allah wants to see the action. We said last night, why Allah wants the first, first level of Islam, make shahada. Allah doesn't know who's Muslim, who's not Muslim, why don't we just say it's all telepathy. So Allah says, no I want you to know, I want you to take that action. Then Allah is describing in this holy hadith, in this ayatul kareem that I want to see these actions from you and that that action of humility by going to these Muhammadan representatives, these lovers and ahbab of Sayyidina Muhammad they will tahirun, they will purify him. Zakim, they will cause you now to grow. Grow in what? In faith. And faith is what? To love Sayyidina Muhammad more than you love yourself. I remember what people thought faith was. Prophet described faith is that you have to love me more than you love yourself. Who's going to cause you to love Sayyidina Muhammad more than yourself other than a Muhammadan representative? that puts your whole life in perspective of the Muhammadan reality. Then Allah says, that's how you're going to give, when you give it's going to clean, when it cleans they're going to raise you, then they're going to begin to pray for you. That prayer is an assurance and gives sakinah in your heart. The Prophet is listening and heard through that. And as a result Allah is the one whom above everything is listening, knowing and facilitating that Allah's izza and might, Sifat al-Aziz will make it to happen. Because you obeyed His Holy Qur'an and Allah happy with the humility and that you went to the door of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah then stamp it to make it to happen. And that's why He put His decoration in the back. The done worst, I'm the one whom hears and I will make sure that that happens. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa basiri surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.